So we all know that we are under a stress to figure out the um, the um, fee that has been imposed on the township for terms of $30,000. Um, we have to assess everything about that in order to make a decision to go forward and decide what we are able to afford. So in that regard, we spoke about this as an urgent type of a nature. Terry, Ms. Gladys has reached out to Sam's several times over the last two weeks. Yeah, so um, I reached out to Sam's because, um, first of all, the most urgent uh, that I felt that we needed to address was the uh, Sam's board appointment and wanted to just clear up exactly what that was about. Um, and I'll explain what I found there, but also I just wanted to mention that the meeting the board approved between um, myself or staff and a board member is uh, booked for next week. It'll be um, Mr. Dave Eskin and I and Bobby wants to come, <laughs> um, and their vice president of their board. So that is booked and, and we will uh, be hopefully having some really solid answers straight from the source at the next meeting or meeting. Regarding the board appointment for SAMS, I know that we had a citizen um, submit a letter of interest and the board just wanted to be clear, you know, on exactly what, what this was. So um, talking with them um, preemptively because I wanted to have an answer for this meeting, it is absolutely a board of directors position, um, which just to clarify is what um, our solicitor recommended or expressed concern about. Um, and all of the other municipalities, there's nine in total that are in with SIRMS, have um, a voting member on that board of directors and all are elected officials um, at this time. So I did ask just for, cause just for purpose of conversation, if the board was comfortable not having someone appointed to that board of directors because of the solicitor's recommendation, would they be comfortable having someone there, or would it be okay to have somebody there as just a liaison to stay in the loop? And they said that this would be a possibility, but they would have to talk to their whole board. So I just wanted to let you know what I found out regarding that appointment. Um, it was exactly what Solicitor Scott was concerned about, and um, that's what I found okay, out. So there, there is no actual representative that just sits as bystanders. And there is currently not. Board members. They are voting okay. board members. However, I said, um, if if they are only comfortable having sort of a representative to collect information, a liaison, but not be a board of directors, is that something they'd be comfortable with? And they said they'd have to talk to the board, but they did not see any issue with that at all. Okay. Um, secondly, the vice president that you're meeting with, did, did you get a name? Um, I did not. It was, um, uh, it's not Doug Pasco. It's is it Ed Frost? Frost? He just, I talked with Doug and the president was unable to meet due to family issues and he said that we, that she said that we could meet with the vice president and the vice president was able to go to that and so that's what's going to happen. I just didn't get a name on the conversation yesterday. I will really be looking forward to that meeting. Um, and again, if any supervisor, I mean, Dave's going to represent us. And, and as long as there's not three of you, anyone else yeah. is. <laughs> I would, I, there are a lot of questions that, that I have, you know, board representation was one of them. Minutes, you know, if, if we have voting, you know, if there's a representative even in our community, do, are they furnishing minutes to the township, especially in lieu of the payment, you know? And, and I would also like to know if there was a vote on that payment, the $30,000, can we, can the board have that section of the minutes and the vote? Yeah, I when that happen? certainly would really appreciate any board members who um, aren't planning on attending to, you know, submit a list of questions and we'll make sure that we discuss them and get answers. Okay, good. Gary, in light of the fact that that is a sitting board of directors position, do you recommend that we even push and fill that or go in your current recommended space and just... The, the recommendation would be to have a liaison with the express understanding that that person is not authorized to become a board of directors. Okay. Because of the personal liability, it would attach to that person and conversely to the township since you're representing them. You're, you're offering that person up as a director. So now the question is, is there any other current direct, uh, board of directors on that board that will maybe appointed and have to, and other boards prior to ours? 
that are serving them. Well, how many positions do we need one in that board position? Every municipality, this is what Doug told me on the phone yesterday, has one representative. Okay. So, so I know some of the gentlemen that are thinking maybe on that board are affiliated, live in our township, and maybe one was a board supervisor in the town. So that's all I'm wondering. I would really like to see a list of who the board of directors are and and Yeah, from my and that's something we can definitely talk about at that meeting and get for you. But from my understanding from my conversation with Doug yesterday is that there is one representative from each municipality at this time, except for Union Township, and all of the other representatives are elected officials from that municipality. But is, is there an insurance that would protect them? There's nothing that, you know, to protect the them? The problem, when you sit as a board of directors, and I, I encountered this firsthand, you are responsible for unpaid 941 taxes that a city board member that meets once a month doesn't know anything about. Trust yeah. whoever's running the business and unfunded pensions. That happened with the Washington YMCA. I was on the board and we got nice certified letters after the YMCA went under from the IRS saying, Guess what? You owe $345,000 of unpaid uh, 941 s and of unfunded pensions. Frank, have you ever encountered that? I, yeah. I, We've seen it. I have my letter to prove it. <laughs> Not personally, but we've seen it. What are you doing that to? <laughs> you either pay it or... In that instance, we had an asset. And Jack Payette bought the township, the, the, the YMCA in Washington. And the entire closing check went to the IRS. But we were off the book. And that's where the landmark building was now, in Washington. That was, that was the location. But if that wouldn't have happened, you guys would have been responsible for paying that. Oh, yeah. They, they would have come after us. Hmm. We all got we all got certified letters. Okay, so Terry, you kind of have a guideline of what you'll be talking about, and please encourage any other supervisors who have specific questions, reach out to Terry so her and Dave are prepared for that one. And again, what was the date on that? Um, not confirmed, but it, it will be within the next two weeks, but we're looking at next Tuesday. I haven't gotten a... Okay. This coming Tuesday. We haven't gotten a confirmation confirmation, but... Okay. Tuesday is... Okay, and moving on to 